I want to acknowledge Minister uh, Aaron Stewart, who is from Arizona. Um, he's a student at Morehouse School of Religion. He's in seminary, and he said, Pastor Vance, you just always be somewhat traveling and preaching. Can I just go on the road to support you and to learn and to be around some good brothers who are doing great things for the Lord? And I said, man, be ready when I call you. And uh, he came and had an opportunity. That first time in South Carolina, he's from Arizona, the Southwest. We over here in the Southeast, where we love God, sweet tea, and the SEC. Amen. <laughs> Well, you watch what I'm saying. This is ACC land over here. But uh, I'm a diehard Gamecock fan, so charge it to my mind and not my heart. <laughs> if you all have your Bibles with you today, I'm excited about the Word of God. If you all have your Bibles with you today, let's go over to 2 Chronicles 20. 15 through 17. You all can stand for the reading of the word. Second Chronicles chapter number 20 verse number 15 through 17 and when you find that passage say I got it or you can say amen. 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 I'm excited about this word. It's been in my heart all week. Amen. Everybody with me. Amen. amen. Pastor, would you verse Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15 through 17. And the passage reads as this. And he said, Hearken ye all of Judah, and all you inhabitants of Jerusalem. And thou, King Josephat, this said the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by be dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, the battle belongs to the Lord. The battle is not yours, but the battle is God. And it also says, tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Zig, and you shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of Jerel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle, saith the Lord. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and the salvation of the Lord shall be with you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. You all can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, which art in heaven, Lord, I come to you as humbly as I know how, Father God. I ask for your strength, I ask for your might, I ask for your holy power, Father God. I pray that you speak through my mind, speak through my heart, speak through my soul, Father God, that those who came seeking a word, Father God, that their needs may be met, Father God. Those who are dealing with pain, bereavement, Father God, or those who just simply need clarity on where to go and how to go and what to do, Father God. I ask that you let their needs be met, Father God. I remove Vance out of the way, Father God, and I yield to your Holy Ghost and your Holy Spirit, Father God. Have your way in this place. And to those who agree, say amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. Help me, Holy Ghost. The title of my message today is simply Sweatless Victory. Sweatless Victory. Sweatless Victory. As I sit back and watch the news and read blog sites and surf the internet on a daily basis just to see what's going on in the world, it can be discouraging at times. At times it seems like it's rare that the news tell you anything good at all because all they ever highlight is the bad that's going on in the world, amen? amen. It's, it's, it's rare that you hear about all of the good things that God is doing in the lives of his people because they don't highlight the fact that God is still a miracle worker. All right. They don't highlight the fact that God can still make a way out of no way. They don't highlight the fact that God is still a way maker. All you hear and all that they ever show is simply all of the bad news. Yeah. It can be so discouraging knowing that all of this crime going on around us, it can Get discouraged knowing that all of this senseless robbing and all of this killing 
that's going on around us. And we thought that this pandemic was over and now things are starting to get worse than ever with all of this new Delta variant, its concern numbers going back up again and suicide rate is steadily climbing and people losing their minds and going crazy all around us. All that I can think about is we are in battle. We are at war, y'all. We yes. are at a war and the enemy that cometh to kill, steal, and destroy, he don't care nothing about you. The enemy don't care nothing about your family. The enemy don't care nothing about your job. The enemy don't care nothing about your car, your house, or your truck. The enemy that cometh to kill, steal, and destroy, he stay on his job and he stay on his job. 24-7. Yes. Yes, What's going on all around us? It's nothing but war, y'all. Right. Spiritual war. Right. We are at war and we are going through a battle. We all are going through a battle. No matter if you know it or uh, if you don't. We are in a battlefield. The earth is a battlefield and it's a battle between light versus darkness. It's yes. a battle between good versus evil. Yes. It's a battle between the haves and the have-nots. It's a battle between with Democrat versus with Republican. It's a battle between black versus with white. Everything all around us and that's going on in the world right now is nothing but a battle. My that's Lord. right. My Lord. The instant that you wake up in the morning and get up out of your bed, you are getting ready to go into a battle. Yes. And yes. some people are battling on their jobs. Some people are battling with their finances. Some people are battling in their minds with mental health. We all are battling with something that's or right. something that's going on. Don't look down on somebody because right. they battle. Don't look like yours because they that's sin. Right. Don't look like yours. We all are battling that's with something. Right. Yes. My situation may not be your situation. Yes. My battle might not be your battle. Amen. But we all are battling with that's something. Right. Amen. 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 That's right. Our battles just don't look the same. Some folks battling with addiction. Yeah, Some folks battling in their health. Some people battling in their marriage. Every day until God says, well done, my faithful servant. We all will simply That's be right. in battle. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, true. Because the Bible says that we wrestle not against uh -huh. flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers of spiritual weakness in high places. But I come with good news today, my brothers and sisters. I come with good news today, Asbury Memorial Church, that your days of defeat is over. Your days of being in hand are over. Your days of losing are over. Your days of being in lack are over because the season that we get ready to walk in is getting ready to be a season of sweatless victory. I'm talking about victory on your job. I'm talking about victory in your finances. I'm talking about victory in your body. I'm talking about victory in your mind. I'm talking about victory in your career. I'm talking about victory in every area of your life. Amen. The Lord sent me here to Anderson to tell y'all today, sweatless victory in the name of Jesus. You're not going to have to work for it in this season. Sweatless victory. You're not even going to have to lift up a finger in this season. Sweatless victory. You're not even going to have to reply to no foolishness, reply to no nonsense. Sweatless victory. I'm talking about victory where you can go home at night and get you some sleep because this battle is not yours. This battle, it belongs to the Lord. That's the word. Sweatless victory. I can sense the victory all around me. I can feel victory all around me. I can smell victory all around me. Kind of like when it's getting ready to rain and you can smell the rain before it rains. You can feel the rain before it comes. I sense victory is coming in the name of Jesus. Sweatless victory. Sweatless victory. Sweatless victory. I want you to get it in your soul. Sweatless victory. Because see, some of y'all keep on losing because you fight battles that don't belong to you. Oh, right. Some of y'all barely making it.
because you fighting a battle that don't belong to you. Some of y'all can't even get a breakthrough and go through the same thing over and over, year after year, because you're trying to fight a battle that don't belong to you. We right. are on the battlefield for the Lord, and this battle is not yours. This battle is belongs yeah, yeah. to the Lord. Yeah. Get it going. Your life is not your own. Yeah. My life is not my own. Yeah. My life it belongs to the Lord. So, therefore, this battle is not mine. This battle, it belongs to the Lord. When I look like trying to fight a battle that don't belong to me, you look crazy walking in the grocery store and you interject yourself into a battle that something you, you have nothing to do with. This battle is not mine. It belongs to the Lord. How somebody treated you, that battle is not yours. That battle belongs to the Lord. What somebody did to you, that battle don't belong to you. That battle belongs to the Lord. The lies that somebody told on you, that battle don't belong to you. That battle, it belongs to the Lord. What somebody feel about me, how somebody think about me, that ain't my problem. That's between them and God because this battle don't belong to me. This battle belongs to the Lord. Say so. You don't have to worry about nothing anymore because we get ready to walk into a season of sweatless victory, That's victory, right. victory, 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 victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me deal with this text. As we take a look at this text, we have King Jehoshaphat, who is the king of Judah, who just like you and I, we all have been in a battle before where we could have lost it all. And we all have been in a battle before and felt defeated. We all have been in a battle and fought when the battle wasn't even our battle to fight. But glory be unto God that he kept his hand upon us and he didn't let us go under. We all have fought a battle that we didn't even supposed to be in, but thanks be unto God for his grace and his mercy for saving us and keeping his hand upon us and not letting us go under. Thank the Lord that when you were battling with those financial problems that God kept his hand upon us and he didn't let us go under. Think about that time when you were dealing with depression and great anxiety. Thank the Lord for keeping his hand upon us and not letting us go under. That time you were dealing with insecurity, self-esteem problems. Thank the Lord that he kept his hand on us and he didn't let us go under. That time you were dealing with high blood pressure, high cholesterol. You were fighting with cancer. You were battling for your life. Thank the Lord for keeping his hand upon us and not let us go under. You see, the grace of God will save you when you're in a battle when you know you're supposed to lose. The grace of God will save you when you know you should have been defeated. The grace of God is the reason that I stand here today. I know that I could have been dead in my grave right now, but thank the Lord for keeping his hand on me and not letting me go on. I don't know why I would be had it not been for the grace of God and the Lord being on his side. Thank the Lord for his grace and his mercy. And just like you and I, the last time Jehoshaphat was in battle, he almost lost it all. And it almost cost him his life. But God spared him and gave him a second chance. Thank the Lord for being the God of a second chance. That time when I could have lost my life, when I slept with the sleep on the road. Thank the Lord for keeping his hands on me and not let me go on. That time I could have lost my job. Thank the Lord for being a God of the second chance and keeping his hand upon me and not let me go on. That time we had family problems and family issues. Thank the Lord for being a God of a second chance and keeping his hand on me and not letting me go under. If you know God to be a second chance, put those hands together because we serve a God of a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance. I don't know what I would be if it wasn't for God's grace in this mercy. Lord, thank you for keeping your hand upon me and not letting me go under. Amen. Amen. And that leads me to my first point. 
When you in a battlefield, when you going through a battle and fight for your life, you got to know what you know. That's right. You got to know what you know. Cause see, King Jehoshaphat, he scared at this time. Jehoshaphat, he thinking about what happened the last time he was in battle. He get the word that the Ammonites and the Moabites, they all are coming against him. And he get the word that not only the Ammonites and the Moabites, but there's a great multitude of people who trying to destroy him. They trying to kill him. They trying to take him over. But see, they got him outnumbered. But see, when you in a battle, you got to know what you know. And see, this is what Jehoshaphat did. This is what he said to himself that I got a weapon that's greater than any weapon. And that's the power of prayer. I got a weapon that's greater than any army. And that's the power of prayer. I got a weapon that's greater than anything that anybody think they can do to me. In the words of MC Hammer, you can't touch this, honey. Because I got a weapon that's greater than any other weapon. And that's the power of prayer. In the words of my all-time favorite rapper, Andre 3000, of the, the popular rap group Outkast, he said, I got a weapon that never runs out of ammunition. And that's the power of prayer. Amen. 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 When you fight for your life, you got to know what you know. Amen. And when you are in a battle, you got to know what you know. And that prayer still changes things and prayer it still works. Yes, yes. Prayer work then mm -hmm. and prayer work now. Yes. Prayer work for the minor prophets and prayer work for the major prophets. Prayer work in the Old Testament and prayer work in the New Testament. Prayer works if you in the city. Prayer works if you in the field. Prayer works wherever you go. It worked for my granddaddy them. It worked for my grandmama them. And I so know, know that prayer worked for me. When you in battle, you got to know what you know that nothing can stop me because prayer changes things. Yeah, 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 Because yeah, yeah. if God be for me, yeah. who can be against me? Yeah. And when I call on the name of the Lord, the Lord, he hear my cry. And when the Lord hear my cry, my Father, he don't only hear me, but my father gonna show up. And I don't know when, but God hears my prayers and I know he gonna show up. I don't know where, but God is going to show up. I don't know how, but I know God hear my prayers and I know he's going to show up. Yes, amen. Amen. And Jehoshaphat called all the people in the town. And he said, we got to come together, folks, and we got to pray and pray like never before because all of these enemies that's all around me, all of these enemies that's in the world, church, we got to pray yes. and we got to pray like never before. All that's going on in the church, all that's going on in the world, we got to pray because prayer is our greatest gift that God has given us. And when we come together, as a people and turn to the Lord in prayer. There's nothing that prayer can't handle. There's right. nothing Amen. that prayer can't change. Amen. Amen. He called the people together Amen. for an emergency Amen. fast Amen. in prayer because he knew that if I needed God before, I need God right now. I right. need God to show up right now in my right situation. Now. And some of y'all out there, y'all need God to show up and show out in your situation like right now. Amen. You need God to show right up now. in your finances. You need yeah. God to show up in your health. You need yeah. God to show up in your family. You need God to show up on your job. But God can't show up if you don't talk to God All first right and now. get God attention and cry out to the Lord. Because when you cry out to the Lord, Lord, Amen. he'll show up, he'll show out, Amen. and God will show up on the scene. Yes. Yes. You need God to show up mm. and to show up now. Mm. The reason God's people keep on losing their battle because we don't pray like we used to. Yeah. Church don't pray like we used to. We're not serious about our prayer lives and the enemy is running rampant all in the world because the saints are not praying like Come they on. used to. Amen. Mm -hmm. Come on. If you're going to win, yeah. you got to pray and pray all the time. That's right. Without ceasing. If you're going to survive, you got to pray 
and pray all the time. Yes. If you're going to overcome great obstacles and great challenges in life, you got to pray and pray all the time. Because see, sweatless victory, it comes to those who have a strong prayer life and those who are right, serious now. about the call of prayer. Because your life depends on prayer. Your future, it depends on prayer. Your destiny, it depends on prayer. Your job, it depends Amen. on prayer. Your yeah. marriage, it depends relies on prayer. Everything that you ever think of and everything that God has in store for your life. Amen. That's right. Amen. Pray. It all depends on prayer. Amen. 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 And this leads me to my second point. Yeah. Whenever you in battle, you got to know who on your side. That's right. Amen. You got to know who on your side. Because see, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 12 says that you got to know those who are around you who labor amongst you. All right. All right. When in battle, you got to know who is on your side. You got to know for sure who got your back. You got to know who genuinely want to see you win and who wants you to walk in victory. Who all are around you during this current time will determine whether you win in battle or if you lose. Yeah. Say that. Who all are around you will determine if you live a life of defeat or if you will live a life of victory if you don't if you haven't won in a long time you need to check your circle and what's around you to see what's blocking your victory uh -huh. when god has a special task a special anointing on your life you can't just be kicking it and hanging it with everybody uh -huh. you can't be hanging with folks who are going in the opposite opposite direction of what God is trying to take you. In order for you to win in battle, it's all contingent on who all around you, who are all in your circle. You ain't won in a long time. You ain't got a victory in a long time. Check your circle and see who all around you. All right, yeah. All right. You can't go in battle not knowing who is who. You can't win with people who ain't consistent. You can't win with people who say they love you, but deep down in their heart, they want to see you lose. Deep down in their heart, they'll stab you in the back. Deep down in their heart, they jealous. Jealous of you. You can't win with them kind of people when you fight for your life, life and battle. You can't win with two faced friends around you who you tell them your problems in secret and then they run around and tell your personal business to the enemy. You can't win with them. You got to know who is who and who on your side. You got to have you some friends who love the Lord for real, who love the Lord. You got to have them in your corner. I'm talking about folks who serious about God. And I ain't talking about folks who just play church. I'm talking about people who love the Lord for real. You need some folks in your corner who can push a prayer through when you on, need to be prayed for. You need some people on your team who gives you a word of encouragement when you feel yes. that who can look at you and speak with. Thus said the Lord that even though you tired, I'm not going to let you go. Even though you feel weary, I'm still going to hold your hand. Even though you feel like I can't take this no more, Lord, I stretch my hand up to you. You need people in your corner, people on your side who not going to let you go by the wayside. In order to win in battle, you got to know who is who. Some of y'all losing because you're still sleeping with the enemy. Some of y'all still losing because you kicking with folks who want the position that God already gave to you. You can't win with two faced friends and two faced folks all around you. Check your circle and see who all around you and investigate and say, why I'm not with them, why things not going my way, why I go through the same thing over and over because it might not be you, it's the people around you who block your blessings, who block you from walking in victory. Yes, you need some folks in your court who could pray until something happen and push a prayer through when you need to be prayed for. You need some people on your team who could give you a word of encouragement to keep you going, to keep you moving forward so you don't quit and, 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 and forfeit what God has in store for you. You got to know who on your side. And Jehoshaphat knew that 
if I'm gonna win this battle, if I don't do nothing else, I got to have some folks around me who's serious about prayer. And I gotta have some folks around me who don't mind praising the Lord. Amen. Some folks who not afraid to lift up the name All of right. Jesus. Some folks who ain't afraid to say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Who ain't afraid to say, Lord, here I am right now. You got to have some praises around you because when the tough, the going get tough, you got to have some people who go lift up the name of Jesus. Because Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. see, I need some folks around me that know how to get God's attention when I need it. Yeah. I need some folks around me who know how to pray until something happens because in the midst of battle, it's your praise that's yeah. going to get God's attention. As the song says, praise is what I do because when I open up my mouth and lift up the name of Jesus, the spirit starts shifting some things. Some stuff gets moved around and Praise gets God's attention. It's praise that moves the hand of God. I got to lift up the name of Jesus because yes. when praises go up, blessings it come down. I can afford not to praise God. God has been so good to me. God has been so faithful to me. I got to praise his name. Amen. Jehoshaphat said, put the praises on the front line because I can't lose with people who praise the Lord. I can't lose with people who love the Lord for real. I can't lose for people who are diligent with prayer. Mm -hmm. When you begin to put a praise on your mouth and a praise on your lips, it changes your mind to victory. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Cause see, when you say thank you, Jesus, yeah. you start to get the strength to say I can do it. When you say hallelujah, Jesus, you start feeling God showing up. When you say, Lord, you're worthy to be praised, you start getting your confidence back again. When you start to praise the Lord, your mind starts to change. You start saying, I can walk in victory. I'm going to win this battle. Yeah, I might lost it last time. But the more you open up your mouth and praise the Lord, it gives you the strength. It gives you the confidence. You start walking in victory. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Jehoshaphat said, give me the praises and put them on the front line. Because he knew that if I'm going to win this battle, I got to have some folks around me who love the Lord for real. And this is my celebration point. This is my closing point right here. Whenever you're in battle, you got to believe what God said. I ain't talking about what mama said. I ain't talking about what grandmama said. I ain't talking about what my cousin said. Whenever you in the battle, whenever you fight for your life, you got to believe what God said. You see, help me, Holy Ghost. Watch this, folks. Because see, the Lord told Jehoshaphat, don't worry about all them people. Don't worry about what they're saying in the street. Don't worry about what they say on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I know they got you outnumbered. I know you feel like you can't win. But he said, but all you got to do this time is don't fret. Don't worry. Don't be stressed out. All you got to do is just show up. And when you show up, I'm going to fight this battle for you because this battle is not yours. This battle belongs to the Lord. Don't worry about nothing. Don't be stressed out about nothing. Have no fear. All you got to do is show up this time. And not only when you show up, all you got to do is stand up and be still because this battle ain't yours. This battle belongs to the Lord. You don't have to explain nothing to nobody. Just show up and be still because the battle is not yours. The battle belongs to the Lord. I know what the doctor said. I saw the report too, but this time, go back to the doctor. You stand there with confidence and be still because this battle is not yours. This battle belongs to the Lord. I know they denied you the last time, but see, go back this time and apply again. And when you apply, you can show up and stand firm and be still because this battle is not yours. This battle belongs to the Lord. I know they said your life went about to nothing, but go to the family reunion anyway. And when you go to the family reunion, you show up, you stand firm because that battle is not yours. That battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. Let me tell you about the story 
about being down in the country in Lawrence County. Uh, you see, I remember when I was a child, I used to play football down in the country. And there was a team, they were bigger, they were faster, they were stronger than we were. And everybody knew about this team. This team, they stayed in the newspaper, people followed this team when folks went to work at Walmart Distribution and all them places down in the country. Everybody is talking about how good this football team. But let me tell you about little old us Pop Warner team. We didn't have any sponsors. It was just little old us. We just loved the game of football. We didn't have no big time donors. We just loved the game of football. We didn't have many fans. All we had was my mama and my, my family members and all them. It was big old them and little bit, little bitty, little bitty us. And this team, they had us outnumbered. They had way more people than we had. They had way more money than we had. They had way more resources than we had. But let me tell you a little something about my coach. Can I tell y'all about my coach today? My coach he still got us prepared. Mm -hmm. My coach still believed in us. My coach, he stayed by our side. My coach, he spoke life into us. My hey. coach, he prayed for us. My coach put us in the right position. My coach, he showed love for us. Our coach, he was there for us. And when people asked him the question, how you feel about the game this week, coach? Mm -hmm. The coach said, the game still got to be played. Yeah. And we still got to show up. Amen. The game still got to be played. Mm -hmm. And we still got to show up. So we practicing hard. And he's putting us in every position to win. But just keeping it real with y'all. We couldn't beat this team, y'all. Mm -hmm. This team bigger, faster, and stronger than us. Oh. But we were determined that if we don't do nothing else, we going to show up. Because the game still yeah. got to be played. And we still got to show up. But we made up in our mind that not only if we going to show up, but we ain't going to be scared either because yeah. the game still got to be played. Yeah. And you still got to show up. So then game day came and we were ready. We ready to compete. And as we show up, coach, how you feel? The game still got to be played. Mm -hmm. And we still got to show up. We right here and time is passing. Mm -hmm. Time is passing. And we wait for the other team to show up. Mm -hmm. And then the referee came over there. <laughs> and he said, y'all win <laughs> by forfeit. <laughs> so the other team didn't show up. I'm talking about sweatless victory. In this season, all you got to do is show up. In this season, all you got to do is stand firm. In this season, all you got to do is stand on this work. In this season, all you got to do is pray harder. All you got to do is stand still and know that God is still God. Because in this season that we're walking in, sweatless victory. Because this battle don't belong to you. The battle it belongs to the Lord and the Lord will give you victory but the Lord is my real coach and let me tell you about my real coach his power is perfectly ponderous his energy is effectively enormous his might is miraculously marvelous his strength is strangely stupendous his authority is amazingly autonomous there's nothing that god can't do there's nothing that god can't change there's never been a battle that the lord cannot win there's never been a burden that the lord cannot lift there's never been a disease the Lord cannot heal. There's never been a heartache the Lord cannot feel. There's never been a loneliness that the Lord cannot help. There's never been a promise that my God can't keep. The Lord is my coach and I don't know what I would be without him because he's given me the power. He's given me the authority and greater is he who is in me than he who is of the world and no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper that's why I walk in victory because I know who is for me. I know who is on my side. And if God be for me, who can be against me? Sweat this victory in the name of Jesus. My Lord has never lost a fight. My Lord has never 
lost a battle. Never. My Lord has never went bankrupt. Never. The Lord that I serve, he's more than able to give you the strength, to give you the courage to walk in sweatless victory. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. And as we move forward through this week, Walk in liberty mm -hmm. with confidence. Yes, Lord. Knowing that this battle is not mine. Yes. This battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Walk with the confidence and get you some rest. And stop fighting battles that don't belong Amen. to you. How somebody feel about you, that's not your problem. No. It belongs Amen. to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And as you walk in confidence, because the Bible says, cast all your cares upon him. Mm -hmm. Because he first cared for you. Amen. And when you walk with confidence, mm. you feel better. Come on. Come because on. my coach, he's also the Prince of Peace. Mm. And the great I am. Because mm. mm. see, when you got the greatest coach in your life, that's the mm. Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. And the great I am. Then you can lay your head down at night and sleep with peace. Amen. Knowing that this battle is not mine. Amen. It belongs to the Lord. Yes. The doors of the church are open. Amen. But see, there's no victory if you don't have no coach. You can't win without a coach. You can't win without a shepherd. In order to be all that God has called you to be, you got to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's right. That's it right there. And I overcome obstacle over obstacle, challenge over challenge, because I accepted Jesus Christ in my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. Uh -huh. yes. It don't mean that life going to be perfect. Come on. Mm -hmm. But it means that I have something that's greater than me that give me the power yes. to walk in victory. Yes. Yes. Amen. Victory over cigarettes. Victory over pornography. Mm -hmm. Victory over liquor. Yeah, victory on. over all these stuff that's going on in the yes, world. Sir. It don't mean you're going to be, be, be perfect. But it means that greater is he who is in me than he who is of the world. Because yes, yes. mm. we all fighting a battle. Yes. My battle don't look like yours, Mac. Mm. My battle don't look like yours, Deacon uh, 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 Williams. My battles don't look like yours, my brother. Mm. But we all find it in a battle. Yes. And when you receive Jesus Christ in your heart, Amen. Deacon Richard, come on. He <laughs> charges to my mind and not my heart. It's in I pray for you a lot. And as simple as confessing in your heart and the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Say, Lord, the pastor was talking to me. I'm the one who keep losing. I keep going around and circle and circle. I can't. I'm still struggling with X, Y, and Z. I feel like I'm good one minute, and then I backslide and go on. You get tired of that. That burn you out and get you stressed out. Get with the Lord. Yoke up with the Lord. Change your circle. Change your environment. Whatever you got to do to start walking in victory. Amen. I say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. If you've already confessed Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you can rededicate as well. I say, Lord, I want to try again. I'm nothing but a big old loser. Mm. So what? You got to be real with God. Like that. Talk to God and be real. I'm just a big old loser. Because I've been puffed up and trying to do things my way without you on my side. Mm. But walking with you and holding hands with you, I'm not a loser with Christ on my side. Because mm. the battle ain't mine. Mm. The battle belongs to my coach. Come on, come on. And as long as I'm trusting my coach, and walking with my coach. Because I don't know about all the other places. I got a real good coach. Right. Yeah. Greater than the coach at Clemson. Mm -hmm. Greater than the coach at South Carolina Game Cops. Greater than the coach at Florida State. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I got a real good coach. Yeah. And as long as you're walking with him, you can be victorious and walk in victory. Anyone need prayer? I love to pray for you. I love to 
uh, touch and agree with you. Whatever it is you believe in God for, as long as you stay diligent and pray and trust in the Lord. It may be one year, it may be next week, might be next month. I don't know when it's going to come, but when you cry out to the Lord and the Lord hear your cry, and you continue to serve the Lord with a pure heart, with a sincere heart, God is more than able to turn your situation around. Cameraman, 